One of the questions a lot of people ask me is why I review smaller indie games instead of focusing on the AAA releases that everybody else is talking about. After all, many of the games that I play are from first-time developers who make questionable decisions and just don't have the budget to fully realize their ambitions. You know what? There may be some truth to that, but all I need to do is point to a game like Death of a Wish to show you exactly why I do it. Honestly, I don't care if I have to play 10 bad games in a row because the moment I discover an actual legitimate gem, all I want to do is share that experience with anybody that'll listen to me. This is a stylish and beautifully told beat-em-up about faith and oppression. And I can already tell you that this is going to be one of those games that I'm still talking about at the end of the year. This is my review of Death of a Wish. This is the harrowing story of Christian, an incredibly angry and vengeful fighter who's on a violent quest to take down the cult that raised him. He believes that if he can defeat the four sanctum faiths, father, sister, cardinal, and priest, he'll be able to upend their corruption and bring order back to a nightmarish world filled with evil beasts and religious zealots. But in order to do this, he's going to need to team up with a colorful cast of heroes and come to grips with some uncomfortable truths about himself. Now, in case it's not obvious from the setup, there's a beat-em-up that has a lot to say about faith and spirituality. If you can imagine Golden Axe drawn by David Lynch with a whole bunch of unresolved religious trauma, then you have a pretty good idea of what you can expect from Death of a Wish. Using a magical sword and a wide variety of attacks and combos, Christian will hack and slash his way through a corrupted world filled with nightmarish monsters of all shapes and sizes. Once you get over the game's unique and chaotic visual style, the first thing you're going to notice is just how much fun it is to play. Let me tell you, there have been a lot of brawlers released over the last 40 years, and very few of them are this fast, fluid, and exciting. It's just so damn easy to string together moves and combos all while dodging attacks from all sides and using your magical abilities to break the enemy's shields and do some real damage. Even before you've learned some of the cooler attacks and styles, you're going to be slicing and dicing with the best of them, and it just never gets boring. What really sets the combat apart is how customizable it is. A big part of the game centers around these different magical combos that you can collect called Arias. You'll earn a number of these abilities over the course of the game, usually at pivotal moments, and they really do help to change up the flow of the action. On the most basic level, they act as a different type of combo and attack. Each Aria has its own pros and cons, so you'll have to choose if you want to go into battle with a slower and more powerful Aria, or maybe you'd prefer opting for a faster Aria that is better at chipping away at the enemy's shield. Now, on top of having their own combo characteristics, you can also attach enhancements to the Aria that'll give our hero new powers. You'll find and unlock new virtues and abilities over the course of the game, giving you a lot of incentive to tinker around with your setup and find a combination that works best for you. And what makes this really fun is that you can load up two different Arias at once and switch between them in the middle of combat, giving you some extra variety in how you want to tackle each battle. That's just one of the many smart decisions made by the developer. For being as challenging as some of the bosses are, I actually found this game to be extremely accessible. Leveling up is quick and easy, you can fast travel from many save points, you can actually rewind time if a fight gets out of control, health items literally grow on trees, and the punishment isn't even that steep if our hero dies. If he falls in battle, Christian will respawn at the last checkpoint with his corruption meter filled just a little bit higher. You gotta watch out, too, because things will spiral out of control if you fill up that corruption meter. But don't worry, because you can remove some of that corruption by scoring big combos and killing the enemies in style. It's just a smart idea. Honestly, I was also impressed with how long this adventure is. There's a cool story full of twists and turns, and it's gonna take you anywhere from 6 to 8 hours to beat. The game does an excellent job of mixing things up with new locations, fun side quests, and a whole bunch of crazy characters. And it isn't afraid to go dark and constantly make you think. 
things are not as black and white as the graphics will have you believe. And I found myself constantly impressed with the storytelling and the writing. By the time the game goes completely off the rails in a Hideo Kojima kind of way, you'll not only be ready and primed for it, but you're going to welcome it with open arms. This is one of those games where you never really know what's coming next, which is honestly something that goes perfectly with the chaotic art style. Look, this is, without a doubt, one of the most unique looking games that I've ever played. From the purposely rudimentary characters to the harsh and almost violent sketch designs, this game walks the line between gorgeous and ugly. It's definitely atmospheric, perfectly pairing with the brooding character and emotional story. And if you ask me, it only looks better in the throes of combat. This style allows for some truly strange and interesting enemy designs. It really goes a long way to give you the feeling like you're stuck in somebody else's nightmare. Will this style be for everybody? No, absolutely not. But personally speaking, I found myself swooning over the look and the mood of the game. It truly does not look like any other beat-em-up that I've ever seen before. Now, if you're here looking for things that are wrong with Death of a Wish, then you're not going to find many in this review. I suppose you could argue that one or maybe two of the bosses require some level grinding to defeat, but that isn't a big deal. Nor is it a problem when you end up being super overpowered for most of the late game bosses. I don't know, perhaps there'll be people that complain about the religious commentary and the scratchy visuals, but not me. I felt like everything came together almost perfectly, leading to a truly memorable brawler that has a lot on its mind. The truth is, this is an insanely likable action game with fun gameplay and a story that'll really slap you across your face. The battles look great, the characters are all well written, and there's a real sense of both mystery and discovery the entire way through. This is a confident game made by a developer that has something to say, and they have the goods to back it up. Death of a Wish is big, stylish, and oh, so much fun to play. Hack and slash your way through the nightmarish world of Neo Sanctum in Death of a Wish, the action-packed follow-up to Luca, born of a dream. Using harsh and almost violent scratches to draw on the details, this is an emotional journey that actually has a lot to say about religion, trauma, and what it takes to heal. It's also an intense action game that may look like a chaotic mess at times, but makes perfect sense and is extremely easy to get into. Harsh and unflinching, Death of a Wish is not only one of the year's best games, but it's also an experience that's going to stick with you for a long time to come. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's an older game that really stuck with you? You know, the kind of game where you still think about the story and the themes and the events, even if you haven't played it recently. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with maybe another review or an announcement about the review crew or something. I don't know. We'll find out. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.